In the previous video, we covered the vFlash pool. In this video, we will cover the vSphere 6.x resource pool management. Specifically, we will look at the virtual machine and the resource pool default share values and the impact that they could possibly have on your environment. We will go into detail of configuring resource pools and managing them. And we will also look at backing up and restoring resource pools when DRS is turned off and then turned on back again. With that, we are going to move now to our lab. So we are back at the VMware vSphere web client and we are at the packed publishing site 3 that has one cluster with one host. Now before we jump too deep into resource pools, let's take a look at the fundamental difference between the resource settings for virtual machines and the resource settings for resource pools. So we're all familiar with the idea of uh, shares, limits and reservations. The key though is here in our discussion is to take a look at what it means to say normal for a virtual machine and to specify normal CPU shares for a resource pool. So since we have a virtual machine right here, let's right click on that and look at its resource settings. So we see that normal shares means a, a weight of 1000 and low shares for CPU for a virtual machine is 500 as we know and of course for high it is 2000. So the highest is 2000 shares and of course you can uh, set a custom uh, as well uh, for this but let's just look at low, normal and high for now. So the low is 500, the normal is 1000 and the high is 2000. So the ratio is 2000, 1000 and 500. Now this is for a virtual machine. For a resource pool, let's look at what it means to have a normal share of CPU. So I go into the packed pub cluster, I right click uh, on that and I define a new resource pool. Now when I look at the CPU shares normal, it's 4000. Let's look at the low, it's 2000 here. Well, it was 500 for a virtual machine and it's 8000 here. Let's cancel out of this and go back to our virtual machine and look at its resource settings for memory. When you look at memory, normal shares are 2560. Now, the algorithm for this is that you get uh, 10 shares per megabyte of configured RAM for normal memory share. So the amount of configured RAM for this virtual machine is 256 megabytes. Let's just confirm that. Go back to the virtual machine, I edit settings this time. And we see that the memory correctly is 256 megabytes. So the idea behind this is to show you that there is a fundamental difference between resource pools that are defined at our cluster level where the shares, normal share value as an example for CPU is 4000 versus for a virtual machine which is 1000. And the same thing is for uh, memory as well. The normal shares are 163, 840 megabytes for memory. Uh, here in a uh, cluster level uh, resource pool and uh, the memory shares we can take a look at one more time. It's really quick to do. I think you already know the answer to this. Let's right click on this and edit resource settings. The memory shares uh, normal we just took a look at is uh, 256. Now why is this uh, important? It's important because it is best practice not to have resource pools and virtual machines at the same level. So for example, if you have a virtual machine with normal shares, it has a value of 1000. At the same level, if you have a resource pool with normal shares, that as we saw before, has a value of 4000. Okay, so a virtual machine that's running in that resource uh, pool will actually have 4000 shares available. So out of the total of 1000 plus 4000, which is 5000, that virtual machine that runs inside the resource pool 
actually gets four fifth or 80% of the entire CPU resources compared to the virtual machine outside the resource pool, which will get 1000 upon 5000, which is 20% of the CPU resources which are available. Now, of course, if in the resource pool we add more uh, virtual machines, then obviously the percentage are allocated to each one of them goes down. And it's really difficult to manage because when you add many more virtual machines outside, for example, if you had 10 virtual machines at the same level as one resource pool, all with normal shares of CPU, right? So that would be 1000 shares for each virtual machine. So that'll be 10,000 shares. Inside would inside the resource pool would be 4000. So we'll have 14,000 shares overall available. And the machines that are outside, each one of them will get 1000 upon 14,000 of the CPU resources. Good practice again is uh, to have resource pools at uh, the highest level, have very few uh, resource pools, maybe three or four at the most, and then within that you can have uh, sub uh, resource pools. And uh, try and make it a good practice maybe by actually putting, you know, virtual machines in folders, in, in folders so that you're able to uh, move things in and out very uh, easily into resource pools. So with that understanding of the number of shares that are available by default at low normal and high settings for virtual machines and for resource pools let's now move into the packed pub uh, cluster by right clicking on this we want to deploy a new resource pool and this is how one would deploy a new resource pool for the time being i'm going to cancel uh, out of this and we go to the manage okay, and we look at vSphere DRS. Now, DRS, as you can see here, is turned on. And for our work here, DRS automation is fully automated, power management is automated, and, and so on. I'm going to edit this and actually turn off DRS. DRS is now turned off. Now, when I attempt to create a new resource pool, you see that it is grayed out. You cannot create a new resource pool if DRS is not turned on. It's easy enough to do. We can turn DRS on according to a schedule. When we click on schedule DRS, you get the DRS settings that will be used with an automation level in this case of fully automated, the migration thresh threshold of, you know, in uh, between basically, and the virtual machine automation everything else is also in place and I'm going to get try and get the uh, power management is uh, automatic and when I expand this we get the expansion of the power management automation levels as well so very clearly you can set very granular manner the various uh, DRS settings for power management and for DRS uh, automation right and you can then schedule it so you can define a task a description and then you can configure a schedule so you can say run the action now run this after startup or run it later or set it up on a recurring schedule so if you have a situation where you have understood your work patterns and your resource usage of your uh, data center you are then in a position to actually if the answer is by changing the drs settings which is obviously quite complicated you have the ability to on, to set this up on a on a recurring uh, schedule as well, and and uh, so that uh, you you're able to uh, manage it uh, accordingly. Usually, this is not done just as a matter of uh, good practice in data center operations. Uh, simplicity is best, and so the idea is to understand your your workload and and the resource uh, usage, uh, and then appropriately set uh, DRS settings and let the cluster and the ESXi algorithms uh, take care of the hard work uh, for you. So we cancel out of the scheduling DRS and we're going to put make the DRS settings right here. We click on turn on uh, vSphere DRS. Uh, as you know, uh, the options are manual, partially automated, fully automated. And then you apply priority 1, priority 2, and priority 3 recommendations. And of course, it's priority 1 recommendation and priority 5 recommendations. Okay, and then in, in, in the middle is one, two, and three recommendations. So, this is again an advanced course. I will not deal with the basics of DRS. 
on in terms of power management which we'll deal in a separate uh, video in this uh, section uh, you have similar options available as well and we'll look over some of the advanced options also in a different uh, video so i'm just going to uh, cancel uh, out of this and still turned off so i'll make sure that is actually turned on so i'll turn on vsphere drs and i click uh, okay all right vsphere drs is now turned on now when i right click on the the cluster i'm able to deploy a new resource pool so let's deploy a new resource pool let's call it hack pub resource pool and uh, we'll let it have normal uh, normal shares uh, we won't have any reservations we'll leave everything uh, exactly the same it is again because this this is an advanced course i'm not going to go into what it means to check the expandable reservation type box and so on i am assuming that you are uh, very familiar with this so we're just going to create a new packed pub uh, resource pool and i click on uh, okay and it will go through its motions and here we have the new packed pub uh, resource pool now this is obviously at the same level as the virtual machines and obviously that's not a good thing so i'm going to uh, drag and drop virtual machines into this resource pool so i drag and drop the replication server now interestingly enough this is a uh, a, a solution right so you should not modify the virtual machine directly use the management console the solution to make changes i think we all we all understand that you know for for application you know we, we use its management console we don't go in and change virtual machine uh, settings for for appliances so that's just a reminder that not to treat it as a normal virtual machine but treat it as an appliance basically and i'm going to go one by one and actually even move vcenter which we are looking at right now uh, in there and we'll move in the ubuntu virtual machine there as well now when we expand that we see that uh, the resource pool now contains these four virtual machines i click on resource pool i go to summary you see there are four vms uh, out of which uh, two are powered on that's right ubuntu and vcenter there are no child resource pools and so on and of course you know one can create a child resource pools uh, again like this so if i right click on on the packed pub resource pool i create click on new resource pool and we say packed pub child pool we leave we just make this uh let me click on this and uh there we go okay now the uh, i'm going to simplify this and uh, essentially uh, i'm going to delete uh, the the child pool so that we are going to go back up uh, to the main pack pub uh, uh, resource pool refresh that and we are back back up again to the packed pub uh, resource uh, pool which is uh, right here okay now when i right click on the cluster right uh you see an option here which is called the restore resource pool uh, tree now why is this uh, let's just click on that and it says changes in the available cluster resources or virtual machine resources reservations may cause the resource configuration of the newly restored resource pools to fail basically it's what it is saying is, is is that you know select a resource pool tree snapshot so going backward in time at some point in time i must have created a resource pool tree snapshot well how does that happen so if i delete the resource uh, pool then all all these are going to go back up at the same level and they will all work as uh, virtual machines and the resource pool allocations and the share values and everything else like that will be exactly as they were configured for the virtual machine which is perhaps not what you were actually uh, looking for so if we look to now delete the uh, cluster because remember we could only set up those resource pools when we set up the uh, cluster if i click on that okay and i say i want to delete that uh, cluster it reminds us that deleting a cluster removes the hosts and virtual machines from the inventory and we delete this cluster so if i say uh, yes and we see that we have deleted all those virtual machines and hosts and now we see that after readding the host back into this data center because we don't have a cluster we don't have a resource pool so all these virtual machines are again basically working at the same level so the point is how does one keep a resource pool around even though you have to turn on drs and turn off a drs 
I did it the the hard way by basically saying, well, you know, how do you restore that uh, cluster back or the uh, or the resource pools for that uh, cluster back? Okay, so I went through the process of recreating the packed pub uh, cluster and uh, turning on uh, DRS. And now, of course, uh, we should be able to add a new uh, resource pool. So let's add the new resource pool like we did uh, before. Okay, we leave uh, everything just the way it was, and now we have the packed pub uh, resource pool that will be uh, created. After I refresh, so we have the packed pub resource pool here, and again with those four virtual machines. Four, four of four powered on VMs are two as we were before I deleted that cluster. Point again being if you get the you, if you remove the cluster, the resource pool basically goes away. It was very easy to put it back. Now, if you have a situation where for various uh, reasons you need to turn off uh, DRS, so if you, if you go into this uh, cluster and uh, you go to, into uh, settings and DRS is now turned on, and if for some reason. Uh, we need to turn off uh, DRS by unchecking that box and clicking OK. You will get a message that you have chosen to disable DRS. Doing so removes all resource pools in the cluster. Do you want to save a snapshot of the resource pool tree which can be used to restore it once DRS is uh, enabled? So, this gives us an opportunity to make sure that when we turn on DRS back again, we can restore back the same resource pool tree that was in place before in that uh, cluster. So we'll take a snapshot of the resource pool tree by clicking on yes. And then it asks us to basically uh, define a place uh, where this would be. So on my desktop, I'll take pack pub cluster, I click on uh, save. And that uh, file has been uh, created on my uh, desktop. Now, I can go ahead for this uh, cluster and see that vSphere DRS is now turned off. Now when I go back in here again and I turn on vSphere DRS after maybe maintenance or whatever on my data center has been done and I click on OK, I see that re-enabling DRS does not bring back that resource pool. So I go back into that cluster. And to restore the same resource pool of which we have taken that snapshot before turning off DRS, I now right click on that and I see an option which is restore the resource pool tree. I click on that and it says select the resource pool tree snapshot. Now, we, in this case, we did take a snapshot. So, when I click on browse, I look at that uh, file. Okay, here it is packed pub cluster uh, snapshot. And I click OK. And I click on Refresh. And uh, as you can see, right here, the packed pub resource pool is back with the proper virtual machines under it. So when we look at the summary again, we get the four virtual machines with the two powder virtual machines exactly like it was before we turned DRS off. So a tremendously handy feature. Uh, resource pools are extremely critical to the operation of a well-run vSphere data center. So use uh, uh, resource pools. Don't use them at the same level as uh, virtual machines. Define three or four, maximum five resource pools according to your business requirements and use them wisely and use DRS. Uh, use all the automated uh, facilities that uh, vSphere uh, gives you and uh, distributed uh, power management is also one of them which we'll look at very shortly but uh, a policy based data center which is what the vSphere or VMware software defined data center actually is you define a set of policies and let the software take care of things uh, just like here you define a policy where you you define a, a packed pub resource pool you define the uh, constraints uh, of that uh, resource pool and then you specify the virtual machines that run in that in that uh, resource pool again this is uh, policy based and then let the vSphere vCenter environment uh, take care of things uh, for you
Having looked at vSphere 6.x resource pool management, in the next video we will look at vSphere 6 distributed power management in great detail. I look forward to seeing you there.